them, so I don't know how to how to handle that, but <laughs> nice, nice. Well, regardless of our terrible math skills, we're moving into I'm pretty sure match number four. And currently the score is two to one in our Protoss player TT1's favor. And he is spawning as the purple Protoss in the bottom left hand corner. And in the top right hand corner is going to be our blue Terran player. It's gonna be Nyokin. Now Nyokin got kind of kind of pushed away with his giant push in the beginning of the game, and TT1 went for a very macro-oriented style, so apparently early aggressions out of Nyokin didn't really work out too well. However, he has won the games where he's just been incredibly slow and macro-oriented. I hope we see that type of style out of Nyokin. True. Uh, I do want to point out that in the, the game two where Nyokin won, it was due to TT1 going for pretty early carriers, and that really changed uh, how the game worked. So uh, I do see a probe kind of heading across the map. I, I'm not sure if it was the latency issue or if the probe was actually stopping there and planning to do some sort of tricky thing. Uh, we may not be able to find out. Zaylin has apparently disconnected. I believe it's one of the observers for uh, for the tournament. I don't think it's the main observer, though, so I think we should be okay in order to keep going, depending on if this person gets dropped. We will find out very shortly if we're going to keep the skin going or not. Okay, so keep going is what everyone says. All right, awesome. So they were dropped from the game. We're going to get on into keep going. All the spirit. No, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, they know. It doesn't seem like they even care. <laughs> all right. I don't know. Sometimes the players may not be aware or not know exactly what's going on. So, so, no, so yeah. Okay. You remember when you mentioned that probe? You remember you mentioned it kind of stopped? All or right. Get, that's that's my spider senses tingling, man. They, they tingled really well for this. Now the question is, will the star sense tingle here for Nyokin and be able to detect this happening? Very true. And uh, I want to uh, make a note that this map, Nash Point, normally there's a ramp at your natural that you'll, you'll go down with your scouting unit. So the gateway and pylon are actually just narrowly out of the vision radius of any normal scouting uh, SCVs from the Terran player, unless they're looking for suspicious shenanigans such as this. Also note that TT1 did a gas steal on the Terran player, which may prompt him to go for an early expansion. And he's building a barracks right now, but he could, I don't know, what do you think, Shamsu? Could he have potentially follow up with an early expansion as a response to the assimilator? Yeah, he can He can definitely go for something like a really quick kind of like Rax Expo and just put three SCVs. You actually only have to spend like three SCVs in order to break a, a gas assimilator. It actually doesn't slow you down as much as most people like try to think. It isn't the best, though. However, I do want to mention that a little hero SCV, <laughs> the Star Sense of a Lifetime, was able to scout out the proxy gateway. Very sure the SCV just going to work on this pylon. It's actually doing a good amount of damage. About half of the pylon itself is gone. Unfortunately, that SCV it has to run away. That's all it has completed. We'll go ahead and move towards the Terran, uh, Terran base. Naokin had some really solid Sim City. In the, in the first match where a, basically Marine was stuck between a barracks and a supply depot and the Zealot couldn't even attack it. I'm not sure if we'll be able to accomplish this uh, in this match, however. Uh, yeah, so if you ever have a barracks next to a supply depot, it has to be, you know, kind of leading left to, or reading left to right. It's barracks supply is always going to be a uh, not Zealot type hold, so or sorry, Zealotite hole, so you can actually like walk your marines around them. Um, meanwhile, I have to say, Nyokin has responded almost perfectly to this, puts two SCVs in order to start harassing the pylon. It kept the Zealots kind of very locked down into defending either the pylon that it needs to keep that gateway charged, or pushing in on the Terran. And so Nyokin is actually kind of worried quite a bit of this. Uh, if he doesn't actually get kind of ruined here with the marines, and the marines are a little bit forward if they don't quite make it back to their bastion. This is going to be really scary. Uh, still, one marine falls. There's another one that's being misrallied potentially. One hit for dying. Looks like he gets into a pretty safe spot for the time being. TT1 still has three zealots. They're able to apply a good amount of pressure. 
and Iokin, for the time being, I, I believe he's just going to hold and actually come out ahead if he can deal with these zealots, which it's looking like he should be able to pretty easily deal with now that he's amassed a solid of marine pounds. Yeah, he's done really well with the micro here so far. If the marines don't get caught in this moment, all right, one does go down. Oh, that's true. One zealot falls in, in response, though, and. I, I really think, Shamsa, that the Marine Count's just a little bit too high at this point, and the Zealots can be super annoying, but I'm not sure if they can actually do any real economic damage to the base. Yeah, there's just way too many Marines. But another couple of Marines are going to fall here, but just this giant wall here is going to completely stop not, uh, any type of aggression here from T21. Now, the kind of weird thing is, I think that factory is going to have its machine shop blocked. I guess at this point, he doesn't really care. He wants to just get a couple of vultures out. But, hmm. He's going to have to move that later on in order to actually start getting some tanks out. And the Cyber, uh, cyber Corps has finished up here. So we will start having some Dragoons in the next coming moments. But given that there's just so many Zells out here, he knows that TT1 is so incredibly delayed from getting any type of Dragoons. Well, speaking of Dragoons, the first one did pop up at that original proxy gateway that was completed. So that will be able to at least somewhat deal... Well, never mind. The Vulture gets away with four health. So that I guess TT1 will eventually have to deal with that. But this additional Dragoon, along with the solid Zell account, makes this with this army much more deadly. And it looks like TT1 is really just wants to continue this pressure onto the, the Terran. There's no Vulture speed, there's no lines, it's just basic Marines. Uh, they could potentially force with the Dragoons, but Dragoons generally do really well against Marines in small numbers. Yeah, but I don't know if he actually starts yet. He doesn't really have quite right, uh, have Dragoon range just yet. He's got to keep these uh, these SCVs alive. But actually, if he starts running into just like a couple of Dragoons, he can actually sort of fall into SCVs. SCVs do really well against Dragoon. That's true. Uh, as long as he doesn't get his Dragoon surrounded, they can actually become a huge issue for him. Get in that machine shop. I would like to see a pretty fast take follow up. Lizella dies with these SCVs on the them are mining. The other half are running around, and uh, the second command center gets finished, so at least the SCB count can continue. One Dragoon, one health, it's up to six kills with 14 health. Can the SCBs finish it off? No, they can't. Now you can call his GG. He sees the additional Dragoons, and knows that he will not be able to.